Okay, so now we are factoring quadratics where this a value here, oh, this a value is no longer 1. All right, and so when we have that process, it gets just got a whole bunch harder, and we have to recognize, recognize that fact. Okay. We've also got ones where the, there's no common factors, or, or maybe there's not common factors for these. Right, so the first thing we should always do is look for common factor, and the answer to this, there are no common factors. So the process that we use for this is we take a look at the factors of 5 and we write them out. Well, that's quite simple. There's only 5 and 1. We also look at the factors of 3. Conveniently, there is only one pair. And so now what we do is we start to look at combinations of this 1 and 3 and 1. And we try and figure out how to get 14. So I'm going to, I can go this direction. I ask myself, 5 times 1 is 5. 1 times 3 is 3. I go, can I add or subtract 5 and 3 somehow to get 14? And the answer to that, 5 and 3, I'm never going to get 14. So that means I have the wrong combination. You can maybe just swap over those last, right. swap over to 1 and 3, right? All right, so what we do, what I take a look, this is what I typically could do, is I, well, now I'm going to go across this way. And so I get 1 times 1, and 5 times 3 is 15. Can I add or subtract those to get 15 or 14? And the answer is yes, of course I can. Which means I would have to subtract them and this would have to be negative. I got this by making make it negative. So factory means I make these parentheses. The 5 and the 1, x and x go here because I have to multiply it by this. Now here's the tricky part, be really careful. This 5, I multiplied by 3. So 5 multiplies by 3 all the way on the outside. Make sure you go to where it multiplies. And it has to be positive. This x multiplies to negative 1. And this is the factorization of 5x squared plus 14x minus 3. And this first one we'll double check to make sure we're, we're right. We'll multiply this out. So I get 5x squared plus 15x, minus x, and the last term is minus 3, which becomes 5x squared plus 14x minus 3. That is the same as my question. Hooray! <laughs> I'm going to give myself a crown for doing such a great job on that one. Okay, let's try another one. Here's a scenario now that we have... 2x squared plus 25x plus 12. I have factors of 2 or 1 and 12, or 1 and 2. Yep. Factors of 12. There's a few more this time, huh? There are. I have so 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. All right. And I'm always going to look at them in pairs. These, this pair, this pair, and this pair. Okay. Um, and so now we just start looking, we start to multiply. I... Let's go 1 times 1, 2 times 12. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 12 is 24. Could I add or subtract those to get 25? Well, yeah, I can. Yeah, we got straight there, huh? Right, that's just convenient. Usually it ends up being these factors down here that work out. It's normally the last one, right? Yeah, Murphy's Law says so. They both have to be positive to get a positive 25, which makes sense because they have to multiply to get a positive 12. So that means this is a positive 1 and a positive 12. So when I look at this, I have my parentheses. Again, this 1 is my x. This 2 is my 2x. The 1, here's the tricky part. Remember, all the way over to where it multiplies, 1 gets multiplied by 1, and the 2 gets multiplied by 12, and they're both positive. All right. Okay. One more to go, and then we'll set you on your own. This one, you don't have in your packet, but you should give it a try. You might want to pause it and try it yourself. It's pretty hard. There's so, lots of combinations to consider. This can take a while, this it one. Could. It is. So listing our factors of 12, I know I have uh, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and 1 and 12. These are my, all my possibilities. Now, 
I avoid the one in 12, just from experience, it never seems to be one in 12. So I'm gonna leave that last, my last, my last option. It could be, but it just never seems to work out that way. 20, I could have two and 10, I could have four and five, or I could have one and 20. And those are all my possibilities here. Now, the painful thing is we basically just have to do guessing and checking. And the more you do these, the quicker you get. So if I multiply here, that's four. 60, four and 60, could you get add or subtract those to get x? No, just no, one x, yeah. Just one x. Then I try the other diagonal combination. 12 and 20. Can I get 1x? No. Nope. No way. So that means this combination is not going to work. I then go to 2 and 6 with 4 and 5. So I go 2 times 4, 6 times 5, that's an 8 and a 30. That's not going to get me a positive x. So I'm looking to multiply and add to get that value of positive 1. Here I go 6 and 4 now, 2 and 10, 6 and 4 is 24, 2 and 10 is 10. This will never give me plus 1 when I add together. Okay, so we can start to kind of look for what's going to make them very close together, right? They're going to need to be close together to end up with 1. Right. So I don't think 1 and 20 and 6 is going to work very nicely. So let's they're go gonna, on to the next one. No, nah, they're not going to be close together, right? All right, so let's try... 3 times 4, 4 times 5. These might be quite close. Okay, so if I do 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 5 is 20, and that's not going to be plus 1. Let's switch it around. Now switch it around, and I go 4 times 4, 3 times 5. Ooh, I think I'm liking it. 4 times 4 is 16, the 3 times 5 is 15. I can subtract these to get 1. I need to get a positive 1, which means that's positive and that is negative. There's lots of mental math going on here. You have to be thinking really carefully and pay attention to detail. That means this 5 has to be negative and the 4 has to be positive. So now let's write out the factorization of this. I have my factors. Starting with the 3x and the 4x. That 3x has to be multiplied by which one, Mr. Cole? Negative 5. Sweet. And then the 4x going backwards is the plus 4. All right. This one here I'm going to check because there's a lot of mental calculation here. I don't want to make any mistakes. So I first is 12x squared. The outside negative 15x, the inside, 16x, and the last is minus 20. So I get 12x squared plus x is minus 20. And now I can have a whole bunch of smiley faces because I worked out. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> I covered up the answer nuts. though. <laughs> I went a little nuts. And the answer is 3x plus 4x minus 5. Those ones take practice, and you got to do a lot of those to get proficient. Yeah, they get quicker when you practice them. They take a long time to start with.